What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to create a custom Toast component for your React applications. And so this component you can reuse in all of your React applications or any scenario where you want to provide a little feedback to the user, um, you know, whether or not they've you know experienced some kind of error or they need to receive some sort of informational message. Uh, and so I've built out this little website and you know, if we click on one of these buttons, it's going to pop open a Toast component and we can even specify where we want the Toast component to come up. Uh, so right now I've left it as top left, so it's gonna pop up on the top left side. So if we hit success, uh, you're gonna see it slides in with that nice little animation. Um, we've got the title, the message, uh, the green check mark, and then you know we can also manually close it out, but you'll have noticed that I've configured it to automatically close out after a couple of seconds. And so that is a uh, prop that we can pass into our Toast component to determine when it should auto close or if it should not at all. Um, but right now it's set to four seconds, um, but we can see that we can uh, pop open an informational one uh, we've also got a warning and a danger. So we've got all of those. Um, you can stack them up uh, and you can stack up, stack them up as many times as you want. Uh, if you want to take a look at it on the top right, we can do that. Uh, you want to see the bottom left and uh, we can do that. And then um, the bottom right as well. All right, so that's what we're going to be building out today. Let's get started on coding it. Okay, guys, so I've got a basic React project started. Uh, so here we've got the index.js file. Uh, we're importing React and we're importing React Router DOM and we're gonna render out a basic app component to the element with the ID of root. And here you can take a look at our app component and right now it's just returning a div with the word app. If we take a look at it, it's just going to say app. So before we move on, uh, the first thing that we have to do is establish where we're going to store our state um, because our state is going to store all of the notifications that we wanna show to the user. And uh, you know we have a lot of different options uh, and in your application, you can choose to use whatever state uh, management system that you want. I'm just gonna use the context API for simplicity sake, um, but you can still use my React component. Uh, if you plan to use Redux or any other state management solution, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just need to find the simplest way to um, be able to deliver all of the notifications to my Toast component. And for the sake of keeping this video as short as possible, I'm just going to use the context API. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new folder. Uh, I'm gonna call this context. It's going to store our context API. And I'm just gonna call this, um, we'll call this toast context. So once again, you know, this uh, context API right here is just going to be responsible um, for managing all of the notifications that we want the user to see. All right, so we're going to import React. And I know we're also going to have to import uh, create context as well as use reducer. All right, so now let's create our toast context. So I'm gonna do export const uh, toast context. And I'm gonna set that equal to create context. All right, the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna create our context provider. So this is going to be the component that's going to wrap our entire app so that any component within our app can access the state that's provided by this component. So we're gonna do export const, and I'll just call this a toast context provider. And here under the return statement, I'm just going to return our toast context dot provider. And remember, we want to pass in props into our functional component so that we can then render out all of the child props. All right, so now let's figure out how we're going to store our state. So for my notifications, the way I want to structure um, a notification component or the data associated with it. Uh, we can do, uh, we'll just say const uh, notifications and then we'll set up an array. So this is going to be an array that stores all of our notifications. And what our data is gonna look like is we're gonna have an object and there's gonna be a couple of different properties. So we're gonna have an ID. So each notification is gonna have some sort of ID that we can uniquely identify it so that we can uh, delete specific notifications. So when the user hits the X button, we know which notification they deleted. Um, and uh, for now, what we're gonna do is I'm just going to use a package called UUID. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it just to generate a unique identifier because uh, you know we wanna make sure that these IDs are unique. So I'm gonna import that into the top of the project. So we'll do uh, import. Actually, first of all, we need to install that package. So let's go up here. All right, and we're gonna do an NPM install UUID. And while that's installing, let's import it into our context. So we'll do import v4 as uuid v4 
and we're gonna import that from UUID. All right, and so once again, guys, this is just so that we can generate a unique identifier. If you have another method of doing that, if you want to grab, you know, like the timestamp or something, use whatever method you want. I just wanna make sure that they're unique. And so here to generate that unique identifier, all we have to do is just call the UUID. So we'll do UUID v4, and that's going to generate a unique ID. Uh, the next thing is I wanna have a type property because if we go back to the final product, right, we're gonna have a success component or a success toast, info, warning, and danger. Uh, and so I wanna be able to tell our toast component which one to generate based off of a type property. And that type can be either, you know, success, info, warning, or danger. And so here we'll do type. And as an example, you know, it's just gonna be a string. So we can just do success. Uh, the next thing is going to be the title. Uh, so whatever title that you want to provide to the user. So we can just say, uh, as an example, we'll just say successfully fetched data. And then if you want, we can also pass in a more detailed message. Uh, like, uh, I don't know. I don't really care what it says. We'll just say successfully completed task. Successfully retrieved, uh, you know, all posts or something. All right. And so this is all the data that we need for our notification component. And so this is what it's going to be, this is what it's going to look like our state for our our context is just going to be this it's just going to be a um a list with a couple of different objects with these properties. And so now to actually um manage our state within this component I'm going to use the use reducer hook. Now, we don't need to use the use reducer hook. We can use any hook that we want. We want to use use state, we could. Um but I think for this example it's going to be a little bit easier and makes a little bit more sense to use the use reducer hook. So uh, we've already got that imported. And uh, what we can do is we can say uh, const, and then we wanna destructure out what the overall state is going to end up being, as well as the dispatch. And we'll set that equal to use reducer. And there's gonna be two things that we wanna pass into our use reducer hook. So first of all, is going to be our reducer. And so that's just going to be a basic function. And then the second thing is going to be what our default state is going to be. So when our application actually runs, it's going to be an empty array, but uh, just so that we don't have to create anything while we're testing our application, I'm going to pass in a default state to be uh, this notifications array right here. So whenever we start our application, uh, it's going to create a notification automatically for us. So I'm just going to pass in um, notifications. And now let's work on our, um, our reducer. So, a reducer always has um, two input arguments into the function. It's gonna be the current value of the state uh, as well as an action that gets passed into it. All right, and ultimately what I wanna do is actually, let me minimize, all right, so we've got that minimized. Uh, when our toast component gets created, I want the toast component when the user clicks on a button or creates an error, I want it to be able to do two things. First of all is create a new toast component. Uh, if we, you know, if we run into another error or something, and I also want to delete uh, one of the toast components. So we're going to have two different actions and I want the toast component to be able to dispatch an action uh, that would look something like this. So the first one uh, would be a type of, uh, the first one would be uh, add notification, right? And so anytime our reducer received this action right here, uh, it's going to know that we want to create a new notification and it's obviously going to include a payload property, which is going to contain, you know, the ID, the type, uh, the title and the message and so on. So this is how the toast component is going to create a new notification. If we want to delete it, uh, the toast component can also dispatch an action uh, that's going to have a type of, and we'll just say, delete notification. And in this case, the payload just needs to be, oops, the payload can just be a ID. So we'll just say uh, it can be some kind of ID, right? And that ID is just going to uh, allow us to find out which notification we want to delete and we can remove it from our array or our list. Uh, and so to code this out, right, we're gonna use a switch statement like we do with reducers usually. And uh, we'll do switch, and we want to switch on our action property. Uh, so we'll do action dot type. Actually, we care about the type. We don't actually care about the entire action. We just want to know the type. And we'll say for the first case, what we'll have is for the add notification. All 
right? And for now, um, we won't handle any of the logic right now. I'm just going to return uh, the old state or the original state. And then we'll set up the second case, which is going to be for delete notification. And for now, we'll ignore the logic for deleting that as well. And we're just going to return the uh, original state. And then finally, we'll have a default case, uh, which is always just going to return the state. Okay. And I'm going to move this up here to the top just so it gets rid of that warning message. All right, so we've got our reducer uh, in place. Uh, we haven't set up the logic for deleting or adding a notification, um, but we have enough state so that we can actually start building out our Toast component and see what it looks like. All right, so before we move on to the Toast component, let's just make sure we wire up our provider. So we wanna make sure we wrap our entire application with our context provider. And so I'm just going to import it right here. And I think it's called uh, Toast Context Provider. And we want to make sure the closing tag is around our app component. All right, so that's what it should look like. And so now uh, any components rendered within app will be able to access the data that's provided by our Toast Context Provider. The next thing we should do is let's create a new folder. This is going to contain all of our components. We're just going to have one component. And we're going to call this component uh, toast. You can call it notification, whatever you want. And so this is going to be a functional component as well. And let's go back to the finished project and let's take a look at what our component needs. So um, obviously we want to render out the title, the message. We also need an icon uh, for the, uh, you know, whether it's a success or info. And we also need the closing icon as well. And so there's obviously some extra CSS styles that's applied. You know, if you hover it, it does shine a little bit more. There's some, uh, there's some drop shadow and things like that. So we'll get all of that done. Um, but first, uh, all I really want to do now is just retrieve the data from our context API and render it out into our Toast component. So uh, this Toast component is going to be a container for all of our individual Toasts. And we could create a, you know, we could break this down into two different components, but um, you know, for this video, I just kind of squished it all into one component. I didn't really see the need to break it out into like a toast container and then a toast component. It just seemed like overkill. Uh, so first things first, uh, we're going to use the uh, use context hook so we can capture uh, all the notifications that we want to render out. So we'll do const. And we're going to destructure out a few things, but we do use context. Make sure to import that. And we also want to import our toast context. So we'll import that as well. And so this is going to return two things that we can destructure out, which is the state, right? And if you recall, our state is going to be our, um, uh, it's going to be this array, right? That um, our reducer returns. And we also get our dispatch method. All right, so now rendering things out, I'm going to render out a div. And uh, I'll give this a class of, um, we'll call it notification container. Uh, we'll do notification dash container. And this state object is going to return a array or a list of notifications. So what we can do is we can uh, map through those arrays. So we'll do state dot map. And this is going to give us uh, the notification that it's currently iterating over, as well as the index. And we're going to return some JSX. So here we'll return a div. Uh, so in this uh, parent div, we're going to pass in a uh, a key, and so you know, with any time you're going to render out a uh, a list of anything, you're going to want to pass in a key. So we have the ID that we can use as a key. So we can grab the notification object and then pass the ID. And I'm also going to give this a few classes. So we'll do class name equals, and uh, we'll call this 
uh, notification and then toast. So notification and toast. And within this div, uh, I'm going to create a, another div, and this is going to contain the icon for our toast. And the class for that is going to be notification dash image. So this is going to have the check mark or the X or whatever. And then underneath this, we'll have another div uh, that's going to contain two P tags. And the first one's going to have a class of, uh, we'll say notification dash title. And this is going to have a class of notification dash message. All right, and so that should be everything we need. We just got to render out that data from our notification. Uh, and so for the title, uh, that can be grabbed from notification. Whoops. I'm going to do curly braces and then I want to grab the notification dash title. Uh, and then within this P tag, we're going to send the uh, notification dash message or dot message. And I think that's a good starting point for now. So let's uh, save that and uh, let's render this out into our app component. So here we'll remove this app. And let's just grab our toast component. And let's do a file save all. Oops, looks like we got an error. And I already know what this error is. So if we go back to our toast context, uh, we forgot to pass in the value into our provider. So we do value equals. And I'm going to pass an object. Uh, for now, we'll add the state. We'll eventually add dispatch. Actually, we can add that now. So state and dispatch. That way, our toast component can then achieve the state as well as the dispatch method. All right. And so you can see we've rendered out our toast component. So we've got the title. Uh, we've got the message. And if you already forgot where that came from, that's coming from this uh, right here. And it looks like I've put a typo someplace. Up oh, there's the N. Okay. Uh, now let's add a few extra notifications uh, for now, just to see what that looks like. Uh, so I'm going to create a new ID. And then uh, we'll do UUID v4. Uh, we're going to set the type to um, info this time. And then for title, just generate some random title. Um, informational title. Uh, message. And I'm just going to generate one for warning as well as error as well. All right, so we've got that saved. Uh, so now let's refresh this. And so we've got all of our Toast components. Obviously, it's hideous. We haven't added any CSS, um, but we'll get started on that in a bit. Uh, the next thing I want to do is let's make sure we add our icons, um, because if we take a look at what it looks like, we're going to need a couple of different icons, like the check mark. Uh, we're going to need the informational icon, um, this little warning icon, as well as uh, the danger icon, and then the close icon. So we're going to use a library called React Icons. Uh, and so here we can just do an import. Uh, hold on, let's see. Where's my terminal? Uh, so we'll do an npm install uh, react dash icons. All right, so now if we go back to our toast component and let's take a look at where we want to render out this icon. Uh, so under the image is where we're going to put the icon. Um, however, uh, we don't, uh, you know, we don't, we can't hard code a specific icon because it's going to vary based off of the type. Uh, so whatever uh, type, our notification is we have to dynamically render out a specific icon for that. Uh, and so we could just create a separate function uh, within our toast component. And, uh, we, you know, we can call this something like generate icon. And here we'll pass in the type. 
And then based off that type property, we can then um, you know, return a specific icon. So let's import all of our icons uh, from the React Icons library. And I've already got that set up ahead of time. So we'll do uh, FA check. So that's gonna be the check mark. Uh, we want the FA uh, exclamation circle. So that's gonna be for the uh, error, I think. Uh, then we've got FA exclamation And then finally, we have FA info circle. And that's coming from React icons uh, slash FA. All right, so now we'll set up a simple switch statement and we'll switch based off the type. And we'll say when the type is info, uh, we're gonna return FA uh, info circle. Uh, if it's a uh, warning, uh, we'll return FA exclamation triangle and uh, if it's a danger we're going to return f a exclamation circle and then finally if it's a success uh, we're going to return a f a check and then finally, we need the default as usual. And that's just going to return nothing. Let's save that. Uh, so here, if we go back under our uh, notification image, uh, we'll just call our generate icon function. Except remember, our generate icon function needs to have the type passed in. And that type is coming. Uh, you know, it's going to tell it if it's a warning or an error. So uh, we'll pass in that when we call generate icon and we can grab that from the notification. If we do notification dot type. All right, so let's give that a shot. All right, and there we go. We can see that uh, we've got our icons, although it looks like our error icon didn't generate. So there must be a typo someplace. Oh, and I see that I messed up the type. This should actually be uh, danger. And so now it matches up. So if we save that, reload, we can now get that. I'm not sure why React isn't auto reloading for me, but that's all right. All right, so we've got that set up. Um, we've got kind of the core of what our, um, uh, of the logic for our Toast component. Uh, all we got to do now is style it up and then handle adding and deleting notifications. All right, so let's create a file called app.css. I'm just going to put this in my components folder for now. Oh, sorry, not app.css, so uh, we'll do toast.css. And let's import this file into our toast component. All right, and let's get started uh, styling our toast component. So if we go back to our toast component, the first thing that we create is a div uh, called notification dash container. So this is going to have all of the CSS uh, for the container that contains all of our Toast components. So we'll do dot notification dash container. And what I want to do is I want to give this a font size of 14 pixels. Um, let's set the box sizing to border dash box. Probably should do that um, uh, on the body, but it's all right. Um, let's set the position to fixed. So we want this to be a fixed position so that no matter where the user scrolls, uh, right, it's always going to be in the front of their screen. It's going to be in the same spot. So no matter, I can't scroll on this page because it's just a single page, but uh, this is always going to show up right here if you do a position fixed. 
And I'm just going to set the Z index so that it's always at the front as well. And we'll set the font family uh, to be Arial, Helvetica, Sans Serif. All right, let's do a save all and let's take a look. Okay. Uh, so not much has changed. Um, but the next thing that I want to do is handle the positioning because um, our component should be able to handle positioning, uh, you know, either the top left, the top right, the bottom left, or the bottom right. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to define a couple of different classes for each one of those positions. And the first one will be called top dash right. Uh, and what this is going to do is going to set the top to be uh, 12 pixels. And it's going to set the right to be 12 pixels. All right, so that means, you know, 12 pixels from the top and 12 pixels from the left. So this is going to be the top right scenario, All right? So that's 12 pixels, 12 pixels. Uh, then we're going to do, uh, we'll do bottom right now. And I think you guys can guess what this is going to be. So we'll just set the bottom to be 12 pixels. And we'll set the right to be 12 pixels. So once again, uh, if we take a look at bottom right, so 12 pixels from the bottom, 12 pixels from the right. Uh, right now we don't have the animations, but that's all right. Uh, then we have the, uh, we'll do top left. Uh, and so this is going to be top 12 pixels and, and left 12 pixels. And we'll wrap it up with bottom left. All right, so the way we add the customizability to the uh, position or the location of our Toast component is going to be through props. Uh, and so what we want to do is, uh, if we take a look at where we render our Toast component, I want to be able to pass in a prop that says position. And then we set that equal to, you know, um, you know, bottom dash right or bottom left or top left. So that's how we're going to do it. Uh, to do that, let's uh, go back to our Toast component. Uh, first things first, we want to make sure that we receive our props. And actually, uh, instead of just receiving our props, let's destructure out the position property. And it's very simple. What we can do is here where it says class name, uh, what we want is to pass in or add in one of these extra classes depending on what the position is. So uh, if the user wants top right or if the prop, uh, the position prop that gets passed down is top right, we just want to add it to this class right here. So we can use um, string interpolation and we'll just say, whoops. So you want to change these to back ticks and we'll add in the class of, we do dollar sign position. So that's going to retrieve that prop and pass it in. And remember, since we're using um, JavaScript, we have to wrap this in curly braces as well. All right, so let's save that. And also, let's make sure we pass in uh, into our uh, app component or in our toast component that prop. So we'll do position equals, and then we'll just say um, bottom dash right. All right, and there you go. We can see that it's at the bottom right now. And if we inspect it and go into the body, uh, we could see that under the, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's a little small. Here we go. Uh, so for the uh, our Toast component, you can see we've got the notifi notification container class, and it's now added bottom right. And that's just coming from this right here. So we've got the positioning done. That wasn't too difficult. Uh, now let's style our notification. Uh, so this one's going to have a lot of CSS. I recommend you just copy um, copy this from the GitHub link. Um, but if you do want to follow along, I'll I'll type it out. Uh, let's just set the background for now to be white. We're going to override this anyways, um, based off the type of the of the notification, like if it's an error or if it's a, a warning. Uh, we can set a transition. Uh, so we'll set the position to be relative. Uh, pointer dash events is going to be set to auto. Uh, we want overflow to be hidden and it should be pointer uh, now for margin we'll do zero zero and six pixels 
padding is going to be 20 pixels. Uh, for the margin bottom, I'm going to set that to, I don't know why I didn't just add it into here. Actually, yeah, I'm just going to add it. Margin bottom, uh, we'll set that to 15 pixels. And I'm going to give this a width of 300 pixels. I think that's a good size for a toast component. Uh, and then max height, going to be 100 pixels. Take a look at that so far. Um, we'll set up a border with a border radius. Uh, we'll say three pixels. And then we're going to get some box shadow as well. So we'll do zero, zero, 10 pixels, and then uh, 999. Color is going to be black. And then we'll set a little bit of opacity to 0 0.9. All right, and so there you go. So this is our toast component. You can see that now it's kind of separating itself. Uh, from the background because we've got that box shadow as well. I do want to add a hover effect real quick. So we'll do uh, dot notification, hover, and here we'll just change the box shadow to be 0, 0, 12 pixels. And then uh, we're going to change the color to white. We'll set the opacity to 1 and the cursor to pointer. All right, so now when we hover, you can see it changes. Um, obviously, it's going from uh, white uh, to white, so you can't really see it. But when we set it to the back, uh, to a black background, right, and we hover, right, you can see that little extra glow effect. All right, ne next thing that we want to do is we want to style the title and the message. Uh, so we'll do uh, dot notification dash title. Uh, so font weight will be 700. Uh, we'll set the font size to be 16 pixels. Text align left. Margin dash top to be zero. And margin bottom, let's give it six pixels. And we'll set the width to be 300 pixels and the height to be 18 pixels. Uh, then for the message, it's going to be pretty similar. Uh, we'll set the margin to be zero. Uh, text align left. Uh, this time the height's going to be 18 pixels. Uh, margin left, I'm going to do minus one pixels. Uh, we'll set the overflow to hidden. And then text overflow uh, to ellipsis. And then white space to be no wrap. All right, so there you go. So it's looking a little better. Uh, we can see that the title is bolded uh, and then we've got the message underneath it. So now let's style the, um, the icon. And if you go back to our toast component, you'll see that our icon uh, is wrapped within a div that has a class of notification dash image. So if you go back to our style sheet, we'll say uh, dot notification dash image, uh, we're going to say float left, and we're going to give it a margin of a right of 15 pixels, and we'll give it a font size of 36 pixels. Let's make it a little bit bigger.
and I misspelled notification. That's why we're not seeing any changes. All right, there you go. So now it's starting to look like the final product. So everything's kind of lined up. Uh, there's just a few other things that we got to do. Um, obviously, we need to make sure that depending on the type of the message, uh, we dynamically render out the background color. Uh, so I've got a few more classes. Uh, let's see. If we go back to our CSS, uh, we'll add a toast. So for the toast class, and if you forgot what that is, if you go back to our toast component, uh, you'll see that each individual toast has a class of toast. And here I'm going to set the height to be 50 pixels, uh, the width to be 365 pixels. Uh, color, we're going to set this to white. And padding, we're going to have 20 pixels, 15 pixels, 10 pixels, and 10 pixels. All right, and so we can't see the text now, but that's just because the background's white. So I guess the next step would be to set up the background color. So let's go back to our toast component. And if you recall how we set up the generate icon, uh, we passed in the type and then we returned the specific icon. We can do the same thing for the background color of our toast notification. And I wanna set the background color uh, to be on this div that we return for each individual no notification. So here we can add in, um, uh, where's our class? So notification toast, let's change this to uh, a template literal. So these are gonna be back ticks. Whoops. Actually, instead of doing that, uh, let me go back, let me undo those changes. And instead, we're gonna do an inline style. So we'll do style equals, and we wanna set the background color. Oops, color. Uh, and so in this case, uh, as a quick test, uh, I'm just gonna set this to be blue. And if we take a look at that, you can see they're all blue now. However, we want to dynamically render that out based off the notification dot type. So I'm going to pretty much copy this function right here. Oops. And I'm going to paste it down and I'm going to call this generate background color. All right. So we're going to pass in the type just like we did before, except now instead of returning icons, I'm going to return color. So for the info, we're gonna return that same blue that we just rendered out. Uh, for our warning, we're going to render out, I think it's a yellow, I can't remember. Uh, danger, it's gonna be the red. And success is going to be the green. All right, so now we'll take our generate background color function and under here for the background color property, we're going to call generate background color. And we have to make sure that we pass in notification.type. Right? And so now if we take a look at that, look at that. So now we've got our components done. We've got the colors all in place. Uh, one thing I do notice is uh, right now we don't have any transition. So take a look at this, click on warning, right? It slides in from that specific side. Uh, and so all we have to do is just set up a couple of keyframes in our CSS file. So we're gonna have two different transitions, one from the right, one from the left. It doesn't matter if it's top or bottom because if it's on the left side, it's always going to transition in from the left. And if it's always from the right side, it's gonna transition from the right. So we'll do at keyframes and we'll call this toast in right. And we'll say from transform translate x and we'll just translate it 100% to the right and it's going to go to and we're going to just translate it back to its original position
Uh, and so now if we go back up to our top right and our bottom right, we can add in our animation. So we'll do animation and we'll call in our toast dash in dash right. And we'll do 0 0.7 seconds. And we can copy that into the bottom right as well. Save that. And let's reload the page. And it looks like I have a typo, so let's just go back here and fix that. Hit refresh, and there you go. We can see it slide in from the right. So let's set up the same thing, um, but in the opposite direction. I'm gonna call this toast in left. And this time we wanna translate it from a negative 100%, I believe, to 0%. Right, so that means we're going to move it to the left 100% and then slide it back to zero. So to test that out, let's uh, go back to our um, Toast component. And let's, or sorry, we wanna go back to our app component, change the position, let's just do top left. And did I not save? And it doesn't look like that's working, so I think I messed up Toast. Oh, yeah, I forgot to apply that animation uh, to top left. So we'll just copy this. We'll say Toast in left. And here we'll do animation uh, Toast in left as well. All right, so let's test that out, and there you go. So now we've got our sliding in animation. All right, so let's add our close button um, because we do need to be able to close out our our notifications. So let's go back to our toast.jsx, and let's see where we want to render out our um, close button. And I think a good place is going to be right under, um, right above the uh, notification image. So we can add, uh, well, first of all, let's import the right um, the right uh, icon for that. And uh, this one's going to be called FA Reg Window Close. You just copy that. And right under the parent div for each individual notification, I'm just going to render that out. Oops. And let's also give it a class name so we can style it. And I'm just going to call this uh, close dash button. S save that, go back to our CSS. And we'll call that close dash button. So we'll set the position to be absolute. And we want the top to be four pixels and the right to be eight pixels. And we'll set the font dash size to be 24 pixels. All right, and so because our actual, the div that represents our full notification is position relative, when I do position absolute for the, uh, the close button, it's going to position it relative to this entire notification block. So when I do top of four pixels, it's four from the top of this notification or from the top of this notification. Uh, and then right, eight pixels is gonna be right from this specific notification. The same thing's gonna apply for all the other ones. Okay guys, so since we got the basic styling down for our Toast component, the next step that we have to tackle is setting up the logic for adding in uh, new notifications as well as deleting notifications. So let's go to our um, context. So this is where the logic is going to be because that's where we're storing our state. And if you take a look at our state, remember, it's going to be just a list of objects with these four properties. So to add a new notification, it's very simple. All we have to do is just um, add a new object to this array or to this list. And the way we do that is, remember, we're using the use reducer hook. So that means ultimately we want our, our front end to send a, uh, to dispatch an action, right? So we wanna send an action into this reducer and this action should have a type property that matches add notification. And if it does, it will then um, you know, handle all of the logic for adding a new notification, which at the moment, we don't have any. 
So let's actually take a look. Uh, I, I wrote out what the dispatch is going to look like, but let's just, let me rewrite it out again um, because I had to delete it because it was throwing errors. Uh, so remember the dispatch is going to look like this. So, uh, you know, our toast component will do a dispatch or actually it's not going to be a toast component that dispatches a notification. It's going to be uh, some other component that's trying to fetch or retrieve data and it fails. So it's going to say dispatch. And remember, we're going to dispatch an object with a type property set to add underscore notification. And the next thing is we're going to have a payload. And this payload is going to contain the information for that uh, for that notification. So it's going to have an ID. It's going to have an ID. It's going to have a type. It's going to have a, uh, a message and, and so on. So what we want to do is here, all we want to do is, first of all, when you're doing the use reducer hook, you never want to modify the state. Instead, you want to return the new state. Uh, and what I mean by that is we want to return a brand new array that is an exact copy of our current state, but with this new notification object added to it. And so the way to do that is very simple. All we do is we do brackets. So this implies that we're returning an array, but it's a brand new array because remember, I'm not returning all right, I'm not doing like state dot, uh, what is it, like push or whatever it is for a list. Instead, I'm going to return a brand new array or list. I don't know why I keep saying array. Uh, we want to spread out the current state. So all this does right here is it takes our current state, which is just this list, and it just copies it into this new list. That's all it's doing. It's making a copy. Uh, once we make that copy, we want to add in the new notification object. And so that new notification object is going to be attached to action dot payload, right? Just like in this example below, it's going to have a payload property, which is going to have all the details for the new notification. And so that's all we have to do for logic when it comes to adding a new notification. Now for deleting a notification, uh, it's a little bit different. What we want to do is uh, there's a filter method. Uh, and so we can call this filter method on any list. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a new array for us. So we don't have to worry about creating a brand new array. It's going to automatically do it. Uh, and it's going to uh, filter out certain elements in the array based off of some criteria. So let's do state.filter. Uh, and as we iterate over the array, uh, each element is going to be referred to as a notification. And here, what we want to do is uh, the action in this case, uh, is going to look like this. So the action will be an object uh, that's going to have a type of, you know, delete notification. Uh, and the payload is just going to be some ID, right? This is going to be the ID of the specific notification that we want to delete. And so all we have to do is just return when notification dot ID right? So we grab the ID of the specific notification that we're iterating through in our array. Uh, if that does not equal action dot payload, then we are going to copy it and return it into the new array. So this line right here is just going to ensure that we remove just the specific notification with the ID that was passed under the action uh, payload property. So this is how you remove one specific item from a, uh, from the array. And that should be all the logic that we need. So I'm going to delete all of this nonsense. And we're already passing this down. So if we go to our toast component. All right, let's, uh, let's delete. Let's handle the delete logic. So if the user cl closes this close button or clicks this close button, uh, it's going to trigger an on-click event handler. And here, all we can say is um, we can do, we pass in nothing. We don't actually need to pass in anything. And we can just call the dispatch function or the dispatch method, which remember we are getting from the use context hook. We can say dispatch. And then we want to pass in our object. So our object's going to be a type of. Uh, delete, whoops, delete notification. And the payload, remember, is just going to be the ID. Now, how do we get the ID? Well, uh, we're going to have it under the notification object. So we can just grab notification 
ID. So let's test that out. Uh, let's refresh the page. And if I delete the blue one, it did not do anything. So let's see what we may have done wrong. Yep, and I forgot to save all. Yep. Let's try this out now. You can see we deleted the blue one. We click the yellow one, gets deleted, deleted, deleted. So the delete functionality is good to go. Um, all we got to do is now uh, handle the add, uh, the add notification functionality. And so we need some kind of button that it's going to trigger that. Uh, and so I figured let's just build out this app that I have right here where we have these buttons. And so we can just manually trigger them um, because we're not actually like fetching any data or anything to actually trigger a notification or we don't have any other logic in our test application. Uh, and so if we go back to our app component, uh, let's add a, another div uh, with, let's see, what class do we want to give it? Let's give it a class of main-content. So this is going to house, um, you know, all of this right here. And let's just add a button. And I'm just going to call this success. And he's just going to have an on-click event handler. So when the user clicks this, we're going to um, well, generate a new notification. So we'll call this handle button select. And I'm going to create that function right up here. And we're going to pass in the type. So, uh, you know, if the user clicks this green button, uh, we're going to pass in the type of success. If you pass the, the blue one, it's going to pass in a type of info. And just like we've kind of done before with the icons and the background color, uh, we're going to do a switch statement. And we're going to switch based off of the type. And we'll say case. Uh, the first one's going to be success. And in this case, oops. Uh, what we want to do is we want to dispatch. So let's uh, let's grab that use context hook again. So we'll do const. And we want to destructure out state and dispatch. And we'll do use context. Let's make sure to import that. And let's import our uh, toast context. We've got both of those imported. And so now we can do a dispatch. And we want to dispatch our object. So remember that we need two properties. We'll do type, which is going to be add notification. And then we need the payload. So the payload is going to contain all the information for our new, um, our new component, our new notification. Uh, and so we want an ID. And I'm just going to import the uh, UUID library into my app component as well. So that'll just generate a random ID. Type is just going to be type. Um, that's passed into this function. Title, I'm just going to create a generic title of success. Uh, same thing with message, which is just going to be successfully complete. Save that. And then um, let me just to get rid of the blue swiggly lines, I'm just going to say default return. All right, so I'm going to copy this, and we're going to have three more, uh, one for info, warning, and danger. We'll do info. Should be all capital, by the way. Change this to info. Let's just say some information. Copy that. Next one's going to be warning. Change this to warning. And last but not least, we've got our danger. All 
All right. And so in this example, since this is the success button, uh, we're going to send um, a type of success. All right. So we can test that out real quick. And we've got this button. This should generate our success notification. And it did. And it's perfect. And we can close it out. Uh, so now that we got that, uh, you will notice that it does just sit there. Uh, and so, you know, let's create the four other buttons real quick, just to make sure all of our other toasts work. And then we'll set up, um, set up the logic so that we can automatically close out notifications after a, uh, predefined interval. All right. So let me copy this button and paste it three more times. So we'll have, um, what order did I use here? Success info warning danger. This is going to be info. And we got warning here. I'm going to capitalize everything. All right, so we've got our four buttons. Let's test it out. Success. Ugh. Info. Kind of hard to click it. This thing's in the way. Warning. And danger. Perfect. And we can close out all of these. So we've got that done. Uh, now let's go back to our Toast component and let's figure out how we can set up the, um, the option to either auto-close out our notifications or not. And the way we're going to do that is just like we did with the position uh, we have a position, where did it go? We have a position uh, property. Uh, let's add in a uh, a property to determine if we want to auto-close our notification or not. All right, and I'm going to call this property auto-delete interval. And so they can, uh, so we can pass in some value, like 4,000, this is going to be in milliseconds. Uh, and so this is going to mean that we want to auto close our notifications after four seconds. And if this property isn't defined, uh, so we'll do a check to see if it's defined or not. If it's not defined, then we'll never close out the notifications until the user manually clicks the X button. All right, so let's go back to our toast component. And here where we're doing the state dot map, uh, what I want to do is, uh, conf well, first let's double check to see if we are uh, if we have the auto delete interval prop defined. And remember, we need to destructure that out. So we're destructuring position. We also want the auto delete interval. And if it is defined, uh, then what we want to do is let's set an interval. So this is just going to create a timer for us. Right, and there's going to be two properties to the timer. So there's the callback function that runs after the timer ends, and then we also want to set how long the timer should run. So the timer is going to run based off the value of auto delete interval. And what we wanted to do after um, the timer ends is that we want to dispatch a delete notification. It's that simple, right? It's no different than uh, what we did. Where is it? It's no different than this dispatch right here. So we can just copy this and paste it into here. And that's all we have to do, guys. So let's try that out. Um, we're passing in four seconds. So let's save all. Let's try it out. So one, two, three, four, and it closes out. Perfect. And let's just try one other one just to make sure. So one, two, three, four. Perfect. All right, guys. So that is pretty much the logic behind our Toast component. We're pretty much done. Um, the only thing the last thing that I want to do for this video is, you know, for the sake of completeness, because we already have our toast component done. There's nothing else to do to it. Um, but if you do want to be able to create this page, I'm going to walk you through what I did to set this up. Uh, so let's style this out a bit and then let's add this drop down menu so that we can, you know, select, um, you know, where we want our notifications to pop up. All right. So we've got our four buttons. Uh, if we go back to the completed app, we've got our four buttons. Uh, we do need the drop down. So let's add the drop down. Uh, so here we're going to use the select component and we're going to have a couple of different options. So we'll do uh, option 
the first value is going to be top dash left. And this is going to be, it's going to say top dash left. And let's just copy that four times. We've got top right. And then now we've got the bottom left and bottom right. All right, let's save that. We've got that right there. And we've got our different options. They're not really doing anything right now, but we'll get to that. Um, the first thing that we want to do is, though, is we want to make sure this is a controlled uh, component because anytime you're working with inputs of any kind, by default, HTML wants to store the state, but React should ultimately be controlling that component. So I'm going to use the use state hook up here. Uh, so we'll call this. Um, position and set position, which equals use state. And I'm going to default to top dash left. Let's give it that default. And don't forget to import use state. I'll let VS Code do that for me. Whoops. All right, and the value of our select statement is going to be set to position. So it's going to grab uh, whatever stored in the state. So by default, it's going to grab top left. And then we'll set an on change event handler. So when the user clicks a new value, I'm going to pass an arrow function uh, with the event. And we'll say set position. So we'll set the new position to be e.target.value. All right, let's make sure we didn't break anything. All right, everything looks good. And now all we want to do is we want to take our position and pass that in as the prop. Uh, so position, instead of hard coding at top left, we're going to do position. All right, let's take a look at that now. All right, let's close all of these. Well, actually, yeah. And then let's change this to top right and let's do success. Perfect. Although, did it slide in? It looks like the animation got broken. Uh, let me try bottom right. Top, wait, uh, bottom left. So it only, it's only sliding in on the left side. Uh, let's fix that up. Let's see, what did we mess up here? Sorry, right, we'll come back to that. I think I have an idea of what's causing that. All right, so I'm going to add a app.css file so we can style our entire page. And let's import that into here. So we'll do import. And last thing that I want to do is uh, I'm going to add a class to my select component. So we'll do class name equals, and we'll call this position dash select. And then for each of these buttons, we're going to add some extra classes. So I'm going to do class name equals, and then each one, each button will have a class of button, and we'll also give it a class of button dash success in this case. And I'm going to copy this and paste it for all the other ones, but just change this to info. And I'm going to change this one to be warning. And this is going to be danger. Uh, so now in our app.css, uh, let's, first of all, I'm going to give the body a dark background. So we'll do background color. And I'm going to set this to RGB 44, 42. 42 is going to give us a, a nice gray. Now let's style the main content, right? Uh, so um, I have a div called uh, with the class of main content that wraps the button and the select component. Uh, so let's go and do main. Whoops. And 
And so I want to position this absolutely. And I'm going to set this to the top at 40%. And from the left, 50%. So just placing this just a little bit above midway. And then transform, translate, minus 50%, and minus 50%. All right, so let's style our buttons now. I'm going to give it a margin of 5 pixels, a width of 180 pixels. And we'll give it a color of white. And we'll do font dash size of 24 pixels. And we'll give it a border race radius of 15 pixels. All right, so we've got our buttons. Um, now let's just color them real quick. So we've got button dash dash success. And we'll set the background color to be that green. Uh, we'll do button dash dash info. And then let's style our position dash select. So let's give this a width of 100%. Font size of 24 pixels. And then we'll give it a background color of black. Uh, no border. I will set the color to white. Padding, 10 pixels. And then we'll get some margin at the top. All right, let's take a look at that. And this should be two dashes. And so now they should be properly colored. All right, so. All right, things are looking good. Change this to the top right. Bottom right. Not sure what's happening with the animations on the on the left side. Um, but let's see if we can quickly fix that. Um, so let's go back to our toast.css. All right, so I realized I forgot to add one extra class, and that's what's causing the transition to break. Uh, so if we go to our toast component. Uh, under this return statement, this first div should also have the position property. So we can add it here. Um, first of all, let's wrap that in curly braces, change that to back ticks, and just do dollar sign position. And now, if we refresh the page, so the first ones, they'll have solid transitions. We know that. Um, but now, if we click it again, it still transitions just fine. All right, guys, so that's about it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want me to make other React components, kind of like, uh, you know, carousels and things like that, just let me know, uh, and I'll be happy to record a video on that.